we now briefly introduce the concept of cellular communication. And we say now that in general, a mobile station, also called a mobile phone, or a subscriber unit, communicates with a BTS, or a base station, which in turn communicates with the desired user on, at the other end. So the, the, the structure of uh, cellular communication is always that we have a BTS uh, serving a, a, a user, a user, of course, is uh, just a person who is holding uh, their mobile phone and they're communicating, they, they want to communicate. So this BTS or base station is uh, receiving signal uh, and, and sending signals to the mobile user. One is called uplink, the one that goes to the BTS, and the other one is called downlink, the one that comes from the BTS to the user. And therefore, the user is uh, the BTS is connected to uh, to the infrastructure, the, the mobile network infrastructure that consists of uh, base station controller, uh, MSC, uh, HRR, and others. That now takes this user to another MSC who might be serving another BTS. There is another BTS of now a user a user two with a mobile phone. So in general, that is the general structure. And we are going to be discussing this one in a subsequent uh, lecture. But for now, this, have a, this is sufficient to just describe that these two users are distant locations. So they are not as close as I have drawn them. I was just trying to save on space. But in few words, this is the general structure that a user communicates with, uh, tries to communicate with user A, communicates with user B. A signal is sent to the BTS, then they send to the base station controller that connects with other MSCs. Then MSCs look for the server, the MSC that is serving the user B, and then the signal is sent there. We are going to discuss that at a later stage. And then the signal is received by the BTS and finally connect, connected to the, uh, to the mobile station. So that is the general architecture. So we are saying that the mobile station consists of a transceiver control circuitry, duplexer, and an antenna, while the BS consists of a transceiver and channel multiplexer along with mounted, uh, uh, along with antennas that are mounted on the tower. The tower is the one you are referring to the BTS. So the BS are also linked to a power source. Of course, uh, the, the BS that is serving each, uh, each region or each cell must have a power source for the transmission of the radio signals for communication and are connected to a fixed. Now, what I call fixed is from this side where we are talking about uh, BTS connecting to the other BSCs and MSCs until the other BSC is, uh, until the other BTS receives the signal. That is what you are calling, referring to as the fixed backbone network. It may be connecting via fiber, sometimes call it a, a microwave link, microwave links and uh, there are very many ways in which uh, these uh, subsections of the mobile cell network can be connected. So uh, here in this diagram, we have the, a general overview of what I've already illustrated, that we have a mobile station that is being served by this tower, and there are signals that are going uplink and downlink. Of course, this is the down, and this is the up. So once the signal is received by the BTS, the BTS communicates with MSC, oh. and the MSC connects with the PSTN, with the internet. This is what called the large line, and sometimes might be connected to the internet that, uh, that uh, supports uh, VoIP. So we might have a voice over IP supported by the internet, but in, for the general structure, the user is communicating with another cellular user. Then we're talking that the signal is received by the, uh, by the BTS, Send to the MSC and then send to to another MSC that supports some uh, or BSC that supports other BTSs. The BTS that is supporting user B in this case, this is our user A, uh, is identified until now the, the the connection is established and the users are able now to communicate with one another. Here I'm just uh, I'm just uh, referring to this video that uh, will be, that is very good. Because the next section describes uh, how we have moved from zero G when we never had any, we had, this was the beginning of the uh, wireless communication, and I think I alluded to that in, uh, in, an, in the earlier video. 
uh, until where we are now, where we are currently we are being served by 4G, but uh, there are some countries that are already adopting 5G, that is in the year 2021, meaning that uh, probably in the upcoming years, 2022, 2023, the 5G might be fully adopted here and uh, might be supporting that fully. So with the description, the characteristic and the typical scenarios that, that characterize each of these, uh, generations is properly described and again in the notes uh, that are following each of those ideas are mentioned in brief so I will not necessarily repeat all of this because they are sufficiently covered in that video that is very well articulated so I will not have to repeat all this I just ask you to make sure that you go to that video and go through the, go through the notes until uh, that those concepts are properly understood.